um, like when Ivan said that everything is uh, permitted, like uh, he embodies that everything is permitted now that all all hell is all all hell. My accent is horrible. <laughs> all hell is loose. And he is just indulging in these things, but without uh, drawing any kind of uh, fun or uh, satisfaction. He he's just preparing, setting up the mood, sort of to speak, sort of like setting up the mood for the horrible last act of where everything ends. Yeah. But then it doesn't end because he's arrested and he's taken to court. But he's still determined to repent, I guess, right? Like through the whole trial and everything, he accepts his punishment, even though it's for the wrong thing, which is also, you know, it affirms how good his heart is on the inside, despite what he's done in the past. Mm. Yeah, uh, he's uh, maybe after everything, I think he feels that... Um, what I what I got from reading is that he feels like uh, the hand of God or justice or whatever is coming down on him ever since the beginning of the book. Mm-hmm. He always talks like it's the last time. Every time he talks to someone, it's like the last time he's talking to them. Yeah, that exactly. feeling of desperation. And um, and I think at court. He's uh, finally presented with an end, even though it is an earthly end, like his um, co- um, life in the world is ending, but not his life in general, because he's going to be in prison. So his life as a free man is ending. So he's presented with a real life ending to something, which is a sort of something he had been chasing around for a long time. And he's finally confronted with it. And um, he can, he realizes, I think, that he can um, save people by offering himself up for the thing that he has been preparing himself anyway, um, in, a, in a weird way. Like, he has no idea about uh, Pavel or everything. He's just, as I said, very removed from the situation and just... Uh, it speaks very differently to him, I think, than everyone else in the in the room. Like for him, it's almost like a spiritual moment, like he, his opportunity to, like the moment when he realizes that this is what he wants to do to offer himself up. And I I want to hear your thoughts on his relationship with Katya as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit off topic, but sometimes I start wondering what what would actually happen if he succeeded in his suicide mission, if I may call it. Like, would the whole Fyodor mm. uh investigation get stopped, or and they would carry on with their lives like they were before because uh, the so called murder is dead, or or would they just stop? Yeah, this is a really interesting thing to consider. It is. It it's so interesting. Like you're right. Everyone would just continue with their lives. Uh, Fiora would be dead. Mitri would be dead. But, oh my God! Can you talk about it more? Do you wanna? Um, I think that it would be actually really weird. I think that Alyosha would def- definitely like have a breakdown after that because obviously one of him does his thing. That's a really tragic situation. Um. But I think that since Dimitri would have died, then Pavel wouldn't have to commit suicide because nobody would even suspect the fact he was the murderer since everybody thinks that Dimitri killed him and he killed himself. So the murderer is dead, so there is no real threat. Or the Pavel can yeah. carry on with his life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That is a great point. I had never thought about it, and I'm gonna be thinking about it. <laughs> yes, yeah, awesome. I'm extending a handshake of uh, honor and 
thankfulness. <laughs> For you. Katia, did you want to add stuff? You've been sort of quiet. Um, I'm having trouble hearing and I don't want to ruin the recording by continually saying I am having trouble hearing. Oh, okay. So, Aww. so I haven't, it's been like cutting in and out for me, um, but I didn't hear it happening for you guys. So I did, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, sorry. I, uh, I did catch something that somebody said about, um, about what if Dimitri had killed himself. And um, I think it, it's, it's important to um, remember that that's, I think that's kind of like how it happens. People's lives just go on. Like when we think, if we think briefly on demons for a second, Kitty Love thinks he's making this like grand statement, but like people just go on with their lives. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's not... Obviously, some people would consider it a real tragedy and would mourn, but they would... Oh, I didn't mean that individuals wouldn't suffer, but, like, the world goes on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they would. Uh, more just direct. Like, people would be affected, them, yeah. but the world just keeps going. I uh, want to disagree with that, because... You're right about Kirillov because uh, because what died with him was not only him, it was his theory. So that is why um, that is why there's a contrast between everyone like going on with their lives. It's just that they just they don't know they didn't know about his theory, and his theory didn't come true. No, it didn't come true as if he was saying he would resurrect. Right, that, that was a stupid phrasing, what I said. But I mean that it's different with Kirillov. And I think I disagree with um, the statement that other suicides would have the world go on. Because uh, suicide comes up so often in Dostoevsky, like every single Dostoevsky book has a suicide in it. At least one, yeah. Whether, <laughs> at least one, yeah. <laughs> so I think that every single one that he describes has an impact. Um, and if, uh, like, the one in Demons uh, uh, with the, the young man who uh, spends all his money on champagne and it was the, the money of his sister and then he commits suicide um it has an impact on the viewers he he mentions how it like um some people were making fun of it but you can see how it contributed to the general chaos of the community for example exactly uh, i don't think that dostoevsky ever wrote about the character that had no meaning and i do not think that we can say that I think perhaps you mis misunderstand them. what I mean, because that's certainly not what I meant. No, I think uh, maybe I am taking this a little, uh, a little uh, too, like, detailedly, trying to put too much detail into my opposition. But I, I think, no, I understand what you mean like um you're not saying that it didn't matter i know that you're saying that they didn't matter as individuals but um that's not what i said yeah that's what i'm saying you didn't say that but oh, I... um yeah <laughs> the, the sound getting off again yeah um but um what i'm saying is that he doesn't uh, show dostoevsky doesn't show that um they their su any kind of suicide doesn't have an impact like no one besides in Dostoevsky no one really goes on with their lives <laughs> they just yeah. are changed in a very profound manner anyway and I think that in every book a suicide contributes to that um their lives are changed forever and it could have been just like for example this is a spoiler so I'm not gonna say which book it is but there is a character in a book, and it's a secondary character, and they commit suicide. 
and there's a person and uh, at first it doesn't seem like um, they're saying it to explain how it affected them but you can clearly see that there is a big difference before and after them witnessing it so i think that in subtle ways it always shows how it impacts different people but mm-hmm. with kirillov you are right with kirillov of course because with him dies his idea not just him like he embodies the idea he dies the idea dies and no one believes in him and no one cares about his letter they just treat it as uh, evidence Berkovensky wanted wanted them to use it so you're right about kirillov that's it what i had to say to say about that also i about Mitya, i really noticed that he he likes jumping to extremes like oh my father is talking to the girl i like okay i'll tell him oh no um i almost okay i actually i think i killed my father's servant okay i'll kill myself yeah, exactly. He's just, he's very, like... Um, yeah. It's, uh, it is uh, an indication. As, and as you said before about his ab- abandonment, everything basically coming together and then this behavioral um, irregularities, kind of. Mm-hmm. As you said. Like yeah. Jumping to screen at extremes. Immediately going to the most extreme solution or... Uh, and the thing with Katya as well, like his whole, um, the way he behaves uh, with Katya and um, kind yeah. of messianistic like route of I'm going to save this person, I'm going to be saved by this person or vice versa. And uh, yeah, the, that is um, like extreme, choosing the most extreme path every time, every single time. I was just going to like add there about his relationship with Katya like I think that it doesn't get talked about as much as it should because I think that he views her as a savior obviously but he also doesn't treat her that way like he has these ideas about people and then he like doesn't deliver promises or he goes against his word right because his relationship with Grushenka like fully gets in the way of his relations with Katya and that breaks the trust even though maybe he didn't like at heart want that to happen he still went and did it anyways yeah I think uh, uh, what he and Katya have most in common is the desire to uh, torture themselves exactly because, yeah yeah and and um everything that happens between them from the very start the very beginning where he's like this uh miserable chad uh soldier man and he 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 does like he wants to buy her out it's which is like uh padiet's behavior Mm -hmm. um and 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 like he wants to he he um beat himself up about it so much that he wants to marry her and it's like what is the way where i can suffer as much as possible i love grushenka so i have this obligation and then katya is like also like oh the way i can punish myself is through this and the thing that we just talked about Ivan the last time, with, um, in the first um, time we did this with Ivan, we didn't talk about his uh, too much about his relationship with Katya. And I just want to add here that Katya is uh, making herself suffer and then making Ivan suffer for it. Yeah. So basically, it's like a transference. He takes uh, the suffering... Um, she has like this codependent codependent suffering thing with Mitya and then all this suffering that this causes her, she, she inflicts on Ivan as well. So she's the link between the suffering of two brothers, which I think is funny and horrible at the same time. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, unfortunately, unfortunately, I can't provide you know, an insight on Katya because 
Yeah, that's the normal I noticed that she was just 